Good morning, good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I think I heard one person in the front. Let's try that again. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Amen. Praise the Lord, my thank you. So oh, friends, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. God woke us up this morning, did he not? Those of you joining us online, did God not wake us up this morning? So must we not bring to God our praise and our worship this morning, friends? Yes, we shall, friends. We shall. God has done great things for us. He's brought us through one more week. Was this Sabbath promised to us? Remember, we were, we were here last Sabbath. Was this Sabbath promised to us? No, it was not, friends. No, it was not. So we have much to render to God this morning. Amen? Amen, friends. I'm, I'm happy to be alive in God's house this morning, and I'm expecting blessings. Are you expecting blessings? Absolutely, friends. God is in the business of blessing. He desires to pour out blessings, especially on his Sabbath, friends. So again, a warm welcome to you joining us here locally. I pray that the Lord will speak to you directly this morning. Speak to our hearts, friends. Those of us joining online, a very warm and happy Sabbath to you all as well. And those joining us, even for the first time, I pray that the Lord will bless you today, friends. And don't let it be the last time you attend. Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. So as our custom friends, join me as we open up with a word of prayer, as we invite God's Spirit, His Holy Spirit, into our midst, yea, into our hearts. So join me in a word of prayer. Most kind and heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, again for life. You woke us up, you gave us the breath of life, and we are here in your presence, in your midst, not by accident, but by your providence. And so, Lord, our desire this morning is to hear a word from the Lord, is to sit at the feet of Jesus and to receive their God, blessings from on high, to receive healing, to receive deliverance, to receive victory from you, dear God. And upon this Sabbath, your holy day, you desire to pour out blessings on us. So I pray that we will bring our hearts to you this morning, even this day. And as a result, we know, dear Father, that you will give us a new heart, a new mind. I pray for the Holy Spirit that you may pour out thy spirit, Lord, upon your waiting congregation, that we, may that we may behold wonderful things out of your word. I pray that our hearts, our minds will be in tuned to the channels of heaven. Again, Lord, we pray that you may forgive us of all our sins, allow there to be no hindrance, no distraction, but allow the hearts to be open to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive your word. Bless us now, we pray, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. We are so happy to be in the house of the Lord, and as we be, um, continue our service, we're going to do some singing. So let's open our hymnals up as, as we turn to hymn 383, O Day of Rest and Gladness, hymn 383. O day of rest and gladness, O day of joy and light, O balm of care and sadness, most beautiful, most bright, on thee the high and lonely who bend before the throne. Sing holy, holy, holy to the eternal one. Thou art the poor protected from storms that round us rise. A garden intersected with streams of paradise. Thou art a cooling fountain in life's dry, dreary sand. From thee, like Pisgah's mountain, we view the promised land, a day of 
sweet reflection. Thou art the day of love, a day to raise affection from earth to things above. New grace is ever gaining from this our day of rest. We seek the rest remaining in mansions of the blessed. Amen. Let's stand at this time as we sing our opening hymn, hymn 286. Wonderful words of life, hymn 286. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ, the blessed one, gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinners, listen to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Amen. You may now be seated. morning and happy Sabbath once again. We are blessed to be able to meet once again on the Sabbath together and to study God's words. And so that's what we want to do today. So we ask that everyone would get your Bibles. Hopefully you have your Sabbath school lessons, those of you here locally, and get your writing instruments as we study God's words today. Amen, friends. And again, you can find the Sabbath school lesson this morning beneath the YouTube video, those of you joining us online, right there in the description box. The PDF is right there. Click on it, and you can follow us along as well on our, on our, on our website, prophesyagain.org. Click on the menu tab, and the first link you shall see is the Sabbath school lesson, The Secret Rapture. Right. Our mm -hmm. lesson today is The Secret Rapture. So we will uncover this from the Word of God to see is it true or is it false. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we are grateful to be in your presence, and we ask that you will abide with us today. Give us wisdom from your word. 
Open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so let's look at number one on our handout. And it says this, in this Sabbath school lesson, we will address how Jesus will return to earth the second time, and we will disprove the idea of a secret rapture. That's right, friends. Again, we're going through the foundational principles of our faith, our, the doctrines of Adventism. And again, while we go through these lessons, um, it's important to note that we're going to meet individuals, even among our faith friends, mm -hmm. Christians and Adventists, that believe certain doctrines. You wouldn't believe that some of our people believe in a rapture. A secret rapture. A secret rapture, rather. A secret rapture, friends. And we will have to shed light on these things as we meet individuals, friends. Amen? So get your pens, your pencils, your writing utensils, and let's take some notes, even in your Bibles, all right? All right. Let's go to number two. Number two, what does, let's define this term rapture. What does the word rapture mean? Uh. The answer is given to you on the handout, so let's read it together. It says, rapture means to be carried away with power. It means to be caught up, I mean caught away, caught up. And we see the principle here, not the word, but the principle here in 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 17, where the righteous are caught up to meet God in the air. That's right. But let's read this next sentence. It says, the Bible teaches that there will be a, a rapture, but it is not secret. Not secret, friends. Not okay. a word. Again, the word rapture is not in the Bible, but we can see the principle of it right there, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. And we that are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured, as it were. All right, friends? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's build this morning. Let's walk through the line of truth this morning. Amen? Let's go to number three on your handout. The question asks, what are the primary scriptures used to teach a secret rapture? Mm -hmm. What are those scriptures that the rapturists use to teach a secret rapture? Well, it's right there on your handout. Let's go to our first scripture in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Let's turn there, and let's look at verse number 40. Verse number 40 and verse 41. Let's have a reader here so that we can all uh, be brought in. Just raise your hand, and we will give a mic to you. Thank you right here um, on the side in the middle there. Matthew 24, verse 40 and verse 41. Loud and clear for us. All right. One second, please. So Matthew chapter 24, verses 40 and verse 41. All right. Verse 40. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. All right. So there it is. People say there's going to be a secret rapture. We will be just working one day. We'll be sleeping one day. Boom. Boom. One person is poof, gone. Uh -huh. <laughs> they're in heaven. The other one, they're left here on earth. Right. Is that true? No. Let's go to Luke 16, rather, Luke 17. Luke 17 and verse number 26. Let's take another scripture, similar words. All right, Luke 17. Let's not start with verse 26. That does give us the context. We will come back to that. 34. But let's start with verse... 34. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. It says here in verse 34 of Luke 17, friends, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Verse 35. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Verse 36. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. There it is. Th th that's it, friends. A secret rapture, right? Is that, that's the secret rapture, amen? Is that what that means? No. No, that is not <laughs> no, the interpretation. Friends. No, 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 friends. That's not what it means. We have to read the context of our scriptures, amen? Mm -hmm. So let's go to number four on your handout. Yes. So those two scriptures, Matthew 24 and Luke 17, is upon which the rapturists build the foundation of a secret rapture. Mm -hmm. They take those scriptures and say, there you have it. Christ is coming back in secret to take the righteous with him. Poof, gone, disappear. Be it far from thee. Mm. Let's, go to the, let's go to number four, friends, and unravel this. Let's break these scriptures apart here. To understand these scriptures, we must read the previous verses for what? For context. For context. This is number four in your handout. 
So let's go and read Matthew chapter 24 and find out what the context is, friends. All right. Let's get a reader here. Matthew 24, verse number 37, and let's uh, read down. Matthew 24, verse 37. Just raise your hand. All right. We have Thank a you so right much. There. All right. Let's get. Uh, verse, 30, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right. Pause right there. So the Bible compares the days of Noah to the time when Jesus is just about to return. Continue. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. All right. Verse 39. Let's read it very carefully. Go ahead. Uh -huh. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right. So everyone with your pencils, this is why it's important to take notes in your Bible, right? Yes. Underscore the phrase, took them away. all away. Underscore that phrase in your Bible. It's in my Bible. I would show you, but you're kind of far, right? It says, took them all away. So explain to us the meaning of the scripture, Richard. Well, we see here the context is in the days of Noah, right? As Jared said, again, mm -hmm. just to reemphasize, the Bible is comparing the days of Noah to the mm -hmm. second coming of Christ. And it lists a group of individuals that were taken away during the flood. Mm -hmm. Now, you tell me which people, which group of individuals were taken away during the time of the flood. Was the, it the righteous that were saved in the ark, or was it the other group? The wicked. Which, that, that's the wicked, right, friends? So let's read Matthew 30, um, 24, 39. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Mm -hmm. So the Bible lets us know that the wicked who were outside of the ark during the flood, were, what, were, what happened to them? They were taken away. Mm. Amen, friends? It doesn't say they were raptured mm -hmm. or caught up or caught away. They were mm -hmm. taken away. So the context lets us know that it was the wicked who were taken away. Amen, right. friends? And taken away, literally, they were destroyed. destroyed. That's it. They That's were destroyed, the right? So now as we read verse 40 and verse 41, it says, well, let's read the last phrase of verse 39. It says, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This is the second coming. Uh -huh. Similar to how it was in the days of Noah, it will be at the second coming. Uh -huh. You will have two people. One will be in the field. The other one will be taken. In other words, you could have two co-workers. You could work with somebody. You might be saved by the grace of God, and they may be lost. That is what it's saying. It's giving different scenarios, different uh -huh. scenes to show one person will be saved and another person will be lost. Does that make sense? All right. Amen. Clear? It's very clear. All right. So let's go to number five on your handout here. And let's, let's read this note. It's a long note, but we want to read it because it, it gives context to Luke's version. We, we read Luke's version in Luke 17. And again, they use this scripture and say a secret rapture because one is taken, mm -hmm. one is left behind. All right, let's get the context for Luke's version now, friends. Walk with us very carefully and make notes. All right, it says, in Luke's version, not only does he compare the glorious coming of Jesus with the flood, but he goes a step further, comparing it with the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah by fire in the days of Lot. No, no. Luke makes a comparison also with the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. That's why we had you read Luke 17, verses 26 to 30. Luke mentions the days of Noah as well. Mm -hmm. And then Luke also adds, the, gives the context, of course, to one taken and one left behind. Right. All right, friends? All right, let's continue now. In Luke 17 and verse 34, it brings to view two men in one bed. One is taken and the other is left. Uh -huh. Two kinds of people are sleeping in death right now because the Bible compares death to a sleep, right? The dead in Christ and those who are wicked, the lost. When Jesus comes, the dead in Christ rise, but the lost don't rise until the second resurrection. That's Revelation 20 after the 1,000 years. Uh -huh. Luke 17 and verse 36, it mentions two men working in a field, all right? This points to, what does it say there? Evangelism. evangelism. It points to evangelism. Why? There are two kinds of people out there sharing two kinds of gospels, the true and the false. One is going to be saved and one will be lost. 
it confirms this. The field represents the world. That's Matthew 13, verse 38. You can finish. It says here, when Jesus comes again, there will be two kinds of missionaries laboring out in the field. Mm -hmm. That's why it mentions two men working in a field. One is taking, one is left. All right, friends, walk with us. The true and the false. This is why Jesus said, many will say to me in that day, mm -hmm. what day is this? When Christ comes, Second the coming day of, of judgment. Christ. That's right. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? This was one of the false missionaries, the one that will be taken or destroyed. Mm -hmm. And then what will Christ say? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. iniquity. And of course, you have your scripture there, Matthew 7, verses 22 and 23. Mm. All right, friends? So we have the context of Matthew chapter 24 and of Luke chapter 17. Working in the field, one is taken, one is left behind. It represents the true missionaries, the false missionaries. The true gospel, the false gospel. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the secret rapture would fall under? What type of gospel? True or false? A false, false gospel, friends. Amen. A false gospel. Amen? And it's false because the Bible does not substantiate it. Mm -mm. We cannot find it in Scripture. No, friends. Cannot and we find will see that in a few moments. All right. Let's go to number six on our handout. It says, Rapturists also believe Christ's second coming is secret because, he, because the Bible says he is coming back as a thief. Uh. 2 Peter 3 and verse 10 and 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 2. Before we address the direct meaning of these scriptures, let us study how Jesus will return to earth the second time. Uh. Have you ever heard of that, friends? Someone said that, hey, Christ has come back as a thief. Therefore, he's coming back as, as, as yes, my brother, I'm sure you have. He's coming back in secret to rapture us away. He's coming back as a thief. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out what the application of these mean. Right. All right, friends? Yes. So let's start with number seven. The question is, is very simple, and we want to ask you as well. Will Jesus return to the earth a second time? And what do you say? Yes? Now, it may seem like a simple question, but there are people who believe that Jesus' second coming, it is spiritual and it's not literal. In other words, Jesus is not really going to return to the earth bodily again. These are some theories you may encounter. These are what people share. Uh -huh. But what does the Bible say? Let's see what the Bible says, friend. Let's go to John 14. John 14. And let's get a reader in John 14. Let's go to the source and hear what Jesus himself has to say. Just mm -hmm. raise your hand, and we will have a mic come around to you. John 14, verses 1 through verse 3. Don't be shy. We're all family here, right? Yes, friends. John 14. Will Jesus return to the earth? We don't want to time? be the only one speaking. All right, we have a hand right over there. Thank you so much, sister. John 14, start, read from verse 1 through verse 3. Loud and clear for us. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Will Jesus return to the earth a second time? Let's see what the Bible has to say, friends. We know the answer. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Mm. So Jesus tells us that he had to leave earth. He's in heaven now, but he promises he will come again and receive us, those who are righteous, unto himself. So from Christ's own mouth, he says, I am coming back a second time. That is the blessed hope. Mm. Now, in that scripture, does Christ say that he's coming back in secret? No, he doesn't. So can we draw conclusively that Christ, there's a secret rapture happening here, friends? No, we're not. Because again, every scripture we're going to confirm will show you that Christ's coming is not in secret, friends. Mm -hmm. It's very literal. Very audible, we're going to find out, right? Not secret, okay, friends? And again, we're re-emphasizing this point because, again, you're going to meet individuals who are adamant that Christ is coming is secret. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet Adventists. 
you're going to meet Christians, evangelicals, mm -hmm. right, who believe this, and they will test you on your faith to see what you believe. And must you, must you share what the Word of God says? We must know what we believe, friends, Amen. especially in these trying times. Mm -hmm. We're living in some strange times, friends, and every wind of doctrine will blow here and blow there. And we will have to give an answer for our faith. And you know, Richard, this is one of the doctrines that we should know very well because Absolutely. it's in our name. Yes. Seventh day Advent. Adventist. Yes. What does Advent mean? Does anyone know? It means coming, right? We believe in the second coming mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. And of course, the Sabbath and other doctrines. Yes. But we should know this doctrine. Absolutely. Let's go to Hebrews 9 and verse 28 together. Hebrews 9 and verse 28. Let's take another scripture which confirms that Jesus will come to earth a second time. Hebrews 9 and verse 28. Amen. Again, just make these notes in your Bibles, friends, these chain references. Mm -hmm. In your Bibles, in your notes. All right. Hebrews 9 verse 28 says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So there it is. Christ is coming back for those who are looking for him, those who have gotten victory over sin. I want to be in that group. What about you? Amen. Amen. This is why we come to church, Amen. right? All right. Number eight on our handout. Number eight, this question asks, why will Jesus return to the earth? Mm. Now, why? Well, let's go with the Bible, friends. We have a few applications. Why will Jesus return to the earth? Go with us to Revelation chapter 22. Mm-hmm. Revelation 22, and let's look at verse number 12. Can we have a reader, if possible? Just raise your hand. Revelation 22 and verse number 12. Revelation 22, friends. Every hand should be going up. Every hand, friends, because we love to read the Bible, do we not? Amen, friends? All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Revelation 22 and verse 12. Amen. Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his word shall be. Amen. So ho just hold the mic really quick. So why is Jesus coming back again according to the scripture? He's, to he's, give rewards, right? Uh -huh. to, to, um, because of our works, he will judge us according to what we have done. Uh -huh. That's why he's coming back. Amen? Right. Amen. And John 14 and verse 3, we just read that scripture. Jesus said he's coming back. Why did he say he was coming back in John 14, verse 3? Well, he's coming back to take his people home with him to heaven, friends, mm -hmm. right? To take us back. Do we, want, do we want to go back there and confirm it? All right, let's go back to John chapter 14, friends. Let's confirm mm -hmm. that. John chapter 14 and verse 3. As we, as we just read Revelation chapter 22, Christ is coming back to give rewards. Mm -hmm. So if Christ secretly raptures the righteous, what's the point of Christ coming back to give rewards, friends? Logically, you can break this false theory down. You know that, right? Through the Bible. You can break it down, friends. Let's go back to John chapter 14 here. You have it? John 14 and verse 3. It All says, right. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again mm -hmm. and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Uh. So Jesus is coming back the second time to take his people, his children, with him home to heaven. Very simply. That's the answer you can write down on 8B, okay? So we have covered, will Jesus return? Yes, he will. Uh -huh. Why is he coming? We put two reasons. There are other reasons, of course, but we put two. Uh -huh. Number nine. All right, number nine on your handout, friends. Walk with us here. We're still building. In what manner will Jesus come back the second time? Mm. So we confirmed he's coming back, but in what manner? How? How will right? he come? How will Jesus come back? In what manner is he come mm. back? Let's go right to the scriptures, friends. And this is important for us to understand because if we do not understand how Jesus will come back or the manner of how he will come back, we may be deceived because in Matthew 24, we're told mm -hmm. there will be false, false Christ Christ. Yes, claiming, I am Christ. They will be here. They will be there. Mm -hmm. And if we are deceived, we will be running to and fro saying, this is Jesus mm -hmm. when it is not so. All right. Are we in there? Are we there in Acts chapter one, friends? Can we get a reader for this one? All right. We got my sister in the front right here. Acts chapter one. Read from verse nine, nine through eleven, please. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, mm -hmm. and a cloud received him out of their sight. All right. 
And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, shall come so shall, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So according to that scripture right there, we see, look at verse number nine, the last phrase, what received him out of their side? What does it say there? A cloud. cloud. Mm -hmm. A cloud received Jesus out of the sight of the disciples. So he left with clouds. And then as we look in verse number 10, those two men in white apparel, who do you think they were? They were angels. Angels, friends. Angels were present when Christ left. Mm -hmm. And in verse number 11, it says that the same manner that he left, he is coming back also in the same manner. Mm. So we see the clouds were there, angels were there, and he was caught up. He was taken up, right? Amen. So did Christ leave literally, mm. bodily, audibly? So in what manner will Christ return? Mm -hmm. The same way, friends. Now, is that a secret? Mm. If we see Jesus coming back literally, mm. if and we hear Jesus coming back, if we see Jesus coming back, is that a secret? Not at all. No, friends. No, the Bible mm. does not teach a secret coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's very literal, literal, very audible. Yes. Amen. And we're going to find out in the scriptures um, as we go along. And as you just read those scriptures, if you notice, when Jesus was taken up to heaven, mm -hmm. there were witnesses there. That's right. Mm. So when Jesus comes back to earth, do you think there will be witnesses of the same event? Mm. Yes, there will. The angel said in the same manner yes. that he left, he's coming back. Amen. All right. Let's, let's take another right. scripture right there. Matthew chapter 24. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 24, friends. Matthew chapter 24. In what manner will Jesus come back the second time? Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 24. Let's, look at, let's hone in on verse 31. Are we there again? Write these scriptures down beside verse each of 30. The, Let's start there, verse 30. All right. You have it? Yep. All right. It says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, mm -hmm. and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming with what? In the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So the Bible says they shall see Jesus, mm -hmm. and he's coming with what? Clouds. Wow. Then verse 31 well, I guess that's, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're going to we'll get there, right there. We're going to get there. We're going to separate this into another question. So we're walking step by step. Amen? Are we clear so far? Amen. All right. Let's go down to number... All right, let's go down to number 11. I, no, we're, number 11? Number 10. Okay, number 10. I lost my place for a second there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to number 10 here. It says, now, will Jesus' second coming be visible to everyone or only a select group of people mm. as the rapturists believe? Mm. Only will, a select group. Will only seven-day Adventists see the second coming of Jesus? Will only Jews see the second coming of Christ alone? Mm. You tell us, friends. Huh? Is that true? Will only black people <laughs> see the second coming of Jesus? Mm. Only white people? Mm -mm. Huh? Do you think that? No. Let's, let's go to Revelation 1 and verse 7. All right, friends. Let's, again, trace these truths through the Bible. Revelation chapter 1. And let's go to verse 7 here. Mm. Let's have a reader. This is another potent scripture as we look at the second coming of Jesus. Revelation 1 and verse number 7. Just raise your hand. We will come by. In the very back there. The very back. Just keep your hand raised so we can see you. Thank you. In the very back. All right. Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 7. The question is again. Will, will Jesus' second coming be visible to everyone or only a select group of people? Mm -hmm. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him, and also they which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Amen. So we just saw, as in the previous verses, there will be clouds. There, mm -hmm. clouds will be there. And how many eyes will see Jesus? Some eyes, right? Are you sure? Yeah. I, I thought the Bible said some. Maybe I'm not seeing right. It says every eye, every eye shall, shall see, see him, Jesus. friends. All right? So this will not be secret at all. Those who are alive, they will see Jesus. Let's take another scripture. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 24, friends. Matthew chapter 24. Let's get another reader. Matthew chapter 24. Let's look at verse 
Let's look at verse here, verse 27. Matthew chapter 24, let's look at verse 27. Let's get another reader here. The more our senses are engaged, the more we are going to soak up these truths and remember them as well. Matthew 24, verse number 27. All right. We have a reader right there. Amen. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. All right. So I want to ask you all a question. Have you ever been driving at night? And it's very dark besides the street lights. All of a sudden, bang, you see a flash of lightning. And for a second, you see the whole sky light up. And you can see buildings and things you couldn't see before. Has that ever happened to you? You, you guys look not convinced, like you've never seen lightning. You've never seen lightning? I've, I've seen it, and it just lights up the sky. Yes. From one, I mean, you can be miles away, and you see the lightning. And I'm over here, and I see the lightning. Mm. That's how the coming of Jesus will be. That's right, friends. Right? Christ is using here uh, an application in nature to show us what his second coming will be. Right? You can see lightning. Amen? Mm -hmm. Can sometimes you hear lightning? Thunder and lightning, can you hear it? Yes, friends. Yes. Right? So again, no secret. Mm -hmm. And again, this is how you trace the line of truth through the Bible mm -hmm. and show individuals um, not only that there's no secret rapture, but even the second coming of Christ. Right? The manner upon which he's coming. You know, there's a, a statement um, from a, a pastor, C.D. Brooks. You guys remember, know, know of C.D. Brooks? One of the stalwarts of Adventism. He said that we as God's people, as Seventh-day Adventists specifically, should be able to teach the second coming of Christ 12 different ways without essentially repeating ourselves. Mm. Right? We should be able to teach these truths from every other angle so people can understand the applications of the Bible and see the truth, right? And they will, they will be able to neither gainsay nor resist, friends. Amen. That's what it means to be teaching the Bible. They will be so flabbergasted that they, they, they will confess mm. that the truth is the truth, friends. Amen? And so even as we go through this, the, the, this, this, this doctrine here, this false doctrine, as it were, don't look at it as something as you may already know these things, right? Peter says, though you may know them, I'm going to continue to remind you of these things. So you may be established in the present truth, friends. Amen. All right? Okay, let's go down to number um, 11 here. Yes, number 11. So we saw in, uh, on number 10, it will be visible. Everyone will see him. All right. Number 11, will Jesus' second coming be audible? Mm -hmm. Will people be able to hear it? Let's confirm this. Let's go to Psalm 50 and verse 3. This is a very clear scripture. Mm -hmm on this question. Psalm 50 and verse 3. Very clear have, scripture. When you have it, just say amen. All right. Psalm 50 verse 3, it says, Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous around. round about him. Mm. So God is coming, and it will not be silent. It will be so loud, in fact, that the dead in Christ will rise. Amen? They, I mean, it will be so loud. Mm. Those who are dead, it's going to pierce their ears. Mm. Man, only God could do that. Only God, friends. <laughs> so again, is Christ coming back very, very quietly? Mm -mm. No. He says, the Bible says he shall not keep silence, friends. No secret here. Let's, go take, let's take another scripture. Beside mm. Psalm 50, you can write down 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and verse 17. Trace yep. the Bible, friends. Trace the Bible with us. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Verse 16, let's start there and read verse 17. Will Jesus' second return, will Jesus return, will he, no, I'm, I'm here, will Jesus come, be coming back audibly? All right, will he come back audibly? Are we there? All right, it says there in verse 16, for the Lord himself shall do what? Descend, Descend from heaven with a what? Shout. With a shout. With the voice of an archangel and with what? The trump, is a, is a trump silent? All right, friends. With the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Mm. So it gives us there some, something to look at here, right? The Lord, when he, when, he come, when he shall come again, he shall descend from heaven with a shout. Mm -hmm. All right. When you shout, okay, friends, I mean, I don't know how, how else we can break this one down here. A shout is loud, amen? Loud, friends, a shout, right? And the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So there you have another scripture that confirms Christ's second coming will be audible. Let's take another scripture here. Let's go back to the book of Matthew. Matthew 24 and verse number 31. Let's see this one. 
Matthew 24 and verse number 31. All right. Matthew 24, verse 31. We read verse 30 earlier. Mm -hmm. Christ will come in the clouds with power and great glory. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels mm -hmm. with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So he's coming back again with a trumpet. It's going to be loud. Let's move on to the next point. I believe we understand this. Number 12 on our handout. It says, who is Jesus bringing with him to the earth mm. when he shall come back the second time? Who is Jesus bringing with him to the earth? Mm -hmm. Let's see what the Bible has to say. We're still in the book of Matthew. Skip over to one chapter, Matthew chapter 25, and let's look at verse 31. Mm -hmm. Who is Jesus bringing with him when he shall return the second time? All right. Do we have a reader there? Anyone? Wanna? All right. Right behind you, you have some behind. and Yes, the one behind you. Right there, yes. Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and, shall the, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So who's coming back with Jesus? The angels, right? The angels will come with Jesus. Mm. All right, so we see there is very clear. Let's go back to Matthew 24. We just read the scripture. But we're seeing different points as we read these scriptures again. Verse Matthew 24, verse 30, verse, 30, verse 31. It says here, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, mm -hmm. and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man mm -hmm. coming in the clouds of heaven with power and with great glory. Verse 31. And he shall send his who? Angels. Angels. Yes with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So who is Christ coming back with? The angels, friends. And angels are likened unto clouds, right? He shall come back with clouds, with great glory. He's coming back with the angels, friends, all right? Mm -hmm. And we have the, another scripture, again, confirming the same point. Mm -hmm. So you can write these scriptures down in your Bibles. We're not going to go to Luke, but write that down next to these other scriptures to confirm it's not just Jesus coming. It's not secret. The mm -hmm. angels are coming as well. That's right, friends. All right, let's go to number 13 on the handout. Mm -hmm. Now, this one is a very important point to note. Because as Seventh-day Adventists, if we do not know this point, of course, all of the others, we may be deceived, mm. right? It says on number 13 on your handout, when Jesus returns, will he touch the earth? What do you say? Mm. You sure about that? You're positive. So when Jesus, if, if somebody is walking the earth and they say, I'm Jesus, is that Jesus? All right, amen. Let's confirm that from Scripture. Will Jesus touch the earth when he returns? Mm -mm, Let's friends. see what the Bible says. All go, right. Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians. Again, as we read these Scriptures, we're seeing them from different perspectives. That's right, friends. 1 First Thessalonians th chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Are we there, friends? All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I'm starting from verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, second coming of Christ, with mm -hmm. a shout. He's not silent, not secret. With the voice of an archangel, he's very loud. And with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Notice in verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall what? Shall be caught up together with mm. them, the righteous dead, in the clouds with the angels to meet the Lord in where? Mm. In the mm. air. So where's Jesus? If we're in, in the, the air, air, friends, right? Mm -hmm. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Confirmation right there, friends. Christ shall not come the second time to touch the earth, but we shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Amen? All right, let's take another scripture here. Let's go to... We read Matthew 24, oh, yeah. verse 31 a few Same times. Same scripture. Yeah. Let's go to Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Let's take Psalm 50. Psalm 50, but again, write down all of these scriptures because they make a great Bible study. Psalm 50. Let's look at verse 4. Let's start at verse 4, friends. When you're there, say amen. Mm -hmm. Psalm 50 and verse number 4. In verse number 3, again, we saw Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be silent. Verse nope. 4. It says, He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, 
those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So Christ, when he comes back again, he says to the angel, go and gather together unto me those have made, who have made a covenant. Who has made a covenant with God? The wicked or the righteous? The righteous. The righteous, right? So if Christ is telling them to go gather, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 mentions that we're meeting Christ in the ear, mm -hmm. what also is Psalm 50 saying? That we're going to be gathered to meet the Lord where? In the air. In the air, friends. Mm -hmm. Amen? And verse number four says he's going to call to the heavens mm -hmm. from above mm -hmm. and to the earth. So he's going to be above in the air, but not touch the earth. Amen. And this is important. We also want you to write down um, on number 13. This is a reference that you can go back and read later. Great Controversy, page 624, paragraph 2. It is Great Controversy, page 624, paragraph 2. And that passage says that the crowning act in the great drama of deception is that Satan himself will personate Christ. Mm. To personate someone is to come as them fraudulently. So if I put on a mask that looked just like Richard and I was walking around, you, you might think I was Richard. Why? Because his same facial features mm -hmm. I had. The devil will come back and he will be walking the earth very soon and say, I am Christ, and will deceive people. This is why it is important, not just for us to believe that Jesus is coming again, but to understand how he will come. Because Matthew 24 says, if it were possible, even the very, very elect, elect would be deceived. Mm. But if we are in Christ, it is impossible. Amen? Amen. Right, and if we know what the Bible says about Christ coming, can we be deceived? No. No, friends, we cannot. Cannot be deceived. Mm. All right? All right, let's go to the number 14 now. Number 14 on your handout. What will happen to the righteous who are dead and the righteous who are living mm -hmm. at the coming of Christ? Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and confirm this point. Mm. What will happen to the righteous dead and the righteous who are living? When Christ shall come back the second time, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16 and verse 17. Let's confirm this point right here, friends. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ. What will happen to them? They shall rise, rise first, first, those who have died in Christ. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh. So those who are righteous and who are dead, as well as those who are living and are righteous, both groups will meet Christ in the air. Uh. So then think of this. If you are seeing people ascend, literally, off the ground, they're levitating and they're meeting Christ in the air, do you think that's secret? Can that be something secret? Mm -mm. I mean, we see planes when they fly through the sky. We see jets and, and the little um, trail of, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but gas Chem, or chemtra powder. Chemtrails. Chemtrails, yes. right, behind it. We can see that. We can see the moon. If we see mm -hmm. a bunch of people just ascending, do you think that's a secret event? No. Can't be. No, friends. Again, this disproves the idea that the rapture is secret. Mm. Amen, friends. There you have it, confirmation. So the answer, of course, there, the dead in Christ rise, and those, rema those that remain shall be caught up to meet mm -hmm. Jesus in the air. Mm -hmm. Amen? All right, let's go to number 15 on your handout right now. Number 15 on your handout. The question asks, what will happen to the wicked who are living? Mm -hmm. What will happen? So we just confirm what happened to the righteous. What will happen to the wicked who are living here on earth? Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Mm. Revelation chapter 6, what will happen to, the, happen to the wicked who remain here on earth when Christ shall come back the second time? Revelation chapter 6, let's look at verse 15. Let's start at verse 15. Mm. Well, let's look at verse 14 just for context. Okay. It says, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Mm. This is the second, second coming. coming. Amen. Verse 15. It says, and the kings of the earth... And the great men and the rich men, and the chief captains and the mighty men, and even and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in mm. the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Verse and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us 
Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Mm. Why? For, for the great day of his wrath is come, mm. and who shall be able to stand? So what happens to the wicked at the second coming of Jesus Christ? What are they doing according to these verses? What are they crying? They're running. Mm. They're running, right? Now think of this. They are literally calling for a mass suicide. Mm. They want big rocks to fall on them. Can mm. you imagine? Who, who right now wants a rock to fall on you so it can crush you? Not me, friends. Nobody, Not right? Me. But the wicked, mm. they hate Jesus so much. They hate righteousness so much. Mm. The brightness of his coming they, is not inviting to mm, them. They, can't, they would rather commit suicide. They would rather be crushed mm, to death mm, than to see Jesus. Than to repent. Man. Even than to repent, friends, wow. right? The wicked. The and, wicked. And this is why Jesus is drawing us with his love. Mm -hmm. Because if the love of God will not woo us to him, Constrain us. judgment sure will not either. Mm. We have to be drawn to Christ by his love. Would you say amen? And that's what we want to see today, Jesus and his love. Amen, friends. Amen. Let's take another scripture here, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. What will happen to the wicked? Let's get another confirmation. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And let's look at verse 8 here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's get a reader. Mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 8. Just raise your hand. We'll have somebody read this for us. And as, we, as, as, as the hand goes up and the reader comes, you know, my mind goes back, before you read, my mind goes back to that first answer there in Revelation chapter 6 where the wicked cry out for the rocks to fall on them, mm -hmm. which is kind of like an indirect, you may, you may agree with me, an indirect fulfillment of Daniel chapter 2. Mm -hmm. What happens in Daniel chapter 2? Remember the stone cut out without hands comes down from heaven, second coming of Christ, mm -hmm. and what does it do to the image? It smites the image on his feet and the image breaks in pieces, right? Mm -hmm. So shall it be at the second coming of Christ. The wicked cry for the rock, as it were, to fall on them. To crush them. Because they do not repent, friends, mm. right? Because they are even deceived, even self-deceived. All right, friends? So I thought I'd just plug that in there to get your mind just moving, how the Bible connects Scripture with Scripture. All right, let's get the reader here. Reader here, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8. What will happen to the wicked who are living when Christ shall come the second time? And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. All right. So it's clear there. So as the wicked are running away from Jesus, they also, once they see the brightness of his coming, they will be smitten. They will be destroyed mm. at the brightness of Jesus' coming. All right. Sorry. So let's take another scripture here. Isaiah chapter 11. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 11, friends. So the wicked shall be consumed. They shall be destroyed, friends. Let us not be found in that group. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse number 4. Just another scripture confirming the same point. Mm -hmm. And it says this in Isaiah 11 and verse 4. It says, But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So mm -hmm. the wicked will be slain, destroyed at Christ's coming. All right, so that is clear. We have gone through the manner of Jesus' coming. Go ahead, you had a comment. Yes, um, I wanted to add um, in the passage of First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, the key word there for um, the dead and alive is remain. I know we talked briefly about the uh, parable of those that are taken and are left, mm -hmm. but there's also um, some practicality behind um, the verse that um, the word that's used of we which are alive and remain, which means we are left. And mm. about the context of being taken and left, it also invites that um, Jesus was saying right before that, he said, whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, mm -hmm. but he that shall lose his life for my sake shall mm -hmm. save it. Yes. And then right after he says, one shall be taken and the other left. Exactly. Taken. It's a one-two continuity that he's making here. And then the disciples ask, where, Lord? But the question that people are going to ask is, well, what are they asking when, they say, when he says, where, Lord? Well, it's simple, really, because all you can say is, you, th say you're looking at a, down a balcony. Mm -hmm. You see 10 people down there, just right there. And you notice that five have been taken, but then five are left. Now, would you ask where those that are taken are 
or where those that are left are. Mm -hmm. You'd ask where those that are taken are because you don't know where they've gone. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus answers right after and says, wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And in Matthew chapter 24, they're called carcasses. Yes. So that alone should tell you that they're being taken to be eaten by birds. Vulture. And we cross-reference that to Revelation chapter 19, mm -hmm. in which the angel tells them, Come ye all the fowls of the air and gather unto the great supper of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You're preaching now. Amen, brother. Amen. He's ready to teach the second coming. <laughs> Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. <laughs> all Thank right. You. Thank you for that, brother. Let's continue. Let's look at number 16 on our handout. All right. This is a note right here, friends. Are we all together? Anyone confused? Amen, friends. Amen. It says here, note, no, now that we have looked at the biblical manner of Jesus' second coming, let us uncover the meaning of Jesus coming as a thief. We told you that we would get to this point here, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus' coming as a thief has a few applications. We will address two applications in this lesson. One, it means that no one knows the exact day or hour when Jesus will return. Mm -hmm. And two, it means that the wicked will be found unprepared for his return because they have neglected to watch and to pray. Mm -hmm. And of course, it gives, it gives an application in Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 to 51, with the good men of the house, right? We all know that, uh, that account, that parable? Let's turn there. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 24, friends. Let's get that account here. What does it mean when Christ says, I am coming as a thief? The Bible is very clear if we will read for context, before mm -hmm. and after verses, it really does help. Yes. Matthew 24 and verse number 42. Are we there? It says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Does anyone know when Jesus is coming? No. So if you hear someone say, on this date, Jesus is coming. If, they say, if you hear that today, you can know that that's a false prophet. Mm. Amen. Verse 43. It says, But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch, that's the key there, what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his home or his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Mm. Verse 45, mm -hmm. who then is a faithful and a wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Mm. Then it says, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Mm. Notice now it talks about the evil servant. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. And shall begin to smite his mm. fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. Mm. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. And mm. in an hour that he is not aware of. Verse 51 and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So based on those verses, who is the one that is caught unprepared for the coming of uh, his master? It is the evil servant, mm. the wicked. So the wicked, to the wicked, Jesus comes as a thief. Mm. Why? Because they're not watching. They're not praying. They're not analyzing the signs of the times. Mm. They're living life casually. And when Jesus comes, they're unready. Mm. Amen. Right, friends? It's clear. Now, we don't know the hour, friends, but we see, we, if we're watching and praying, we, we can see the signs mm -hmm. of Christ's come, second coming, right? And Christ outlines it all the way down from Matthew tra chapter 24 all the way to the end, right? Mm -hmm. He gives us events and signs. Christ doesn't keep it secret, mm -mm. right? He doesn't say, live your life, I'm coming back in secret. No, he gives us signs of how to trace the line of Bible prophecy, friends, that we may know, not necessarily the hour, but the events, mm -hmm. the, 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 the moments. We can know when it's near. Near, nearness Christ, nearness of Christ coming, friends. All right? All right. Let's go to number 17 on your handout. It's another note. It says, those who believe in the secret rapture also claim that there's going to be a seven-year period of tribulation when the Antichrist will appear, but the righteous will not experience it since they will be taken to heaven. Mm -hmm. Has any of us heard that before? Yes, friends, right? They believe that they're going to be taken before the tribulation. They're not mm -hmm. going to go through crisis because mm -hmm. Christ is going to secretly rapture them away before they go through crisis, right? right? This is another one of the beliefs that the rapturists believe, all right? Mm -hmm. It says, rapturists try to justify this by placing the last week 
of the 70 weeks prophecy in Daniel chapter 9 far into the future. Mm. Let's go there. Let's go to Daniel chapter 9. Now, we do not have time to go through the whole Daniel 9 prophecy of the 70 weeks, right? But we condensed it as much as we could on point number 18. But let's go to Daniel 9 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. We understand that the 70 weeks prophecy is, it was a prophecy given to the Jews. It was a probationary time for them to make an end of sins, to receive the Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. And they were given 70 weeks or 490 mm -hmm. literal years to do so. The last week is in verse number 27. Let's read that. Daniel 9, 27. It says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Mm -hmm. Right? And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So the rapturists believe that this week mm -hmm. has not yet been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It is in the future. A seven-year period in the future when the righteous will be in heaven, the Antichrist will be on earth with the wicked. Hmm. But that is not true according to Bible prophecy. This week has already been fulfilled. Yes. Let's read note number 18, and hopefully no one gets lost. We also gave you um, a link there that you can go on our website and find a handout dealing with the 70, 70 weeks prophecy in detail so you can understand. All right, let's begin, friends. It says the 70 weeks prophecy was the probationary time God allotted Israel to end sin and to receive the Messiah. It began with a decree to restore and build Jerusalem, which was given in 457 B.C. by King Artaxerxes. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 25 says that the Messiah would be anointed after 69 prophetic weeks. Using the day for a year prophetic template, of course you can find that Ezekiel 4 and Numbers 14, that would be 483 years in the future, bringing us to the year 2780 when Jesus was baptized or anointed as the Messiah. And Messiah means anointed one. Mm -hmm. The midst of the week that Daniel 9 verse 27 speaks about was three and a half years after 27 AD, which brings us to 31 AD when Jesus was crucified. Okay? Then it says, going three and a half more years into the future, it brings us to 34 AD when Stephen was stoned, and at that time, probation closed on the Jewish people. The gospel then went forth to the Gentiles. We see the scriptures there. So the 70 weeks prophecy was completely fulfilled, and it does not point to a future seven-year period of tribulation just before the end of the world. Mm. So that was a very condensed version of Daniel 9.27. Hopefully no one is lost, but we can't cover it right now. So the, the notes are there. Amen? You can go back and study. All right. We tried. <laughs> Number 19. By God's grace, friends. By God. And again, go over these notes again in your personal study. Because again, friends, we cannot reemphasize enough. These individuals, these rapturists, believe some of these things, right? That we will be raptured secretly and also raptured before the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And they will say, from the Bible, this is what it means. And as Adventists, we will need to meet these false theories with a thus saith the Lord. Can you agree with that? Amen. Amen, friends. So again, if you don't understand right away, go back over your studies. Pray and ask the Lord, give me understanding. That I may know how to uh, simply break the scriptures down and share the word of truth, friends, right? We have to sow the seeds of gospel truth. Amen? Yes. Amen. All right, let's go to number 19, friends. Yes, we're almost done. It says, as we just saw, rapturous believe that the righteous will be separated from the wicked before the tribulation. Mm -hmm. They believe before the tribulation, the righteous, they're going to heaven, right? The wicked stay on earth. They believe there's a separation coming before the tribulation. Mm -hmm. But let's see what the Bible says. Based on the Bible, when will the separation between the righteous and the wicked occur? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Matthew 13. When will God separate the righteous and the wicked? Mm. This, script, this scripture right here blows, if, if it does anything else, friends, if you missed anything else, this scripture right here blows that false idea of a secret rapture out of the water. All right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. When will this separation occur? Matthew chapter 13. Let's start at verse 24. Christ here is speaking, so we know he's speaking truth. Mm -hmm. Are we there? 
All right. All right. It says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Mm. Verse 25. It's key here. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. So this is the parable of the wheat and, and the, the tares. tears. When does the Bible say the separation is going to take place? Mm. Let's read verse number 30. The Bible does not leave us in darkness, friends. It gives us the answer. Let both grow together until the harvest. Mm. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers who are the angels, we can confirm that, friends. We're going to confirm that. Gather ye together first the tears and bind them into bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Mm. Mm. So at the harvest, this is when the separation takes place between the righteous and the wicked. Mm. Question for you, when is the harvest? You tell me. What is it? The second coming, right? The day of the Lord, right? The mm. second coming. Amen. Let's go to... Let's go to verse 38 and 39. Let's confirm yes. those scriptures. Let's confirm. The, again, the Bible gives us the answer, friends. I love it. Mm -hmm. Verse 38, are we there? Only two people are there. Are we there, friends? Amen. Verse 38 says the field is what? The world. The world, right? Just as we learned in uh, Matthew chapter 24, the field is the world, right? Two, we're working in the field. Amen? All right. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tears are the children of the wicked. Verse mm. 39 now. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Notice, the harvest is the end of the world, mm. and the reapers are the angels. Mm. So at the end of the world, the second coming of Jesus, this is when the separation takes place. You can actually also write down, if you want to study this more, Revelation 14. Yes. Revelation chapter 14, 14 from verses, you can start at verse 12 all the way down to verse 20. Revelation 14, verse number 12, all the way to verse number 20. It shows you again the harvest, harvest. when Christ separates the righteous from the wicked. Mm. All right? So the, the rapturists who say at this seven-year tribulation, tribulation, that's when the separation takes place. That is false. Mm -mm. There is no seven-year tribulation in the future when the righteous are in heaven, the no. wicked are alive on earth with the Antichrist. No, friends. All of us will be here mm -hmm. during the time when there will be deceptions. The Antichrist is, is walking the earth. Even Satan will be personating Christ. Mm. All right. Let's take, another, let's take another companion scripture, friends. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 25, right, right, rather. It's right there on your handout, right on your sheet. Open book test, friends. Matthew chapter 25. Let's look at verse number 31. Let's get a reader for this. All right. Matthew 25, verse 31 to 32. Raise your hand, and we will, we will kindly ask you to grace us with your voice. Amen. All right. Thank you, my sister. Matthew 25, verses 31 to 32. When will this separation take place? When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, mm -hmm. and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Mm -hmm. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them mm. one from another, as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. Wow. So it says God is going to separate. At what event was that, my sister? What, what event? The that, second coming. The second, the second coming, coming of Christ. Amen. Right. The Bible is very clear. So, friends, we have gone through this study for the most part, right? The, the, the manner of Jesus' second coming and also disproved the idea of a secret rapture. Let's focus now on number 20 on our handout, right? As we, we look at examples in Scripture of how people have gone through tribulation and Jesus did not save them from it. Let's read this. All right, friends. So it says here the Bible teaches that the Tribulation takes place before the rapture, for we are saved through it and not from it. Would you agree? Amen. Here are some examples of people who were saved through the tribulation and through the crises. I'll start with the first one. We can go back and forth. Noah was saved how? Through how? Through the flood, friends, not from it. Mm -hmm. Did he not go through the flood, through the crises? Did God rapture him away? No, friends. Mm -mm. Let's go to the next one. Job, it says, was saved through the crisis, but mm. not from it. Did mm. Job have to go through crises here on earth? Yes, but God was there with him. That's right. Look at Joseph, friends. Joseph was not, was not saved from being sold into slavery or the crisis, mm -mm. but God saved him through it. Mm. Amen? 
What about Daniel? Hmm. Daniel was saved through the lion's den, but not from it. Hmm. Did he have to be put in a pit of lions for at least overnight? For, God, for his faith? For his faith. Amen, God friend? saved him, but he had to sleep there. Mm. Mm. Look at these accounts, friends, and, and look at yourself in these accounts. We will have to go through similar crises. Through the tribulation, right? God forbid he put some of us to sleep. Notice it says the three Hebrews, friends, were saved through the fiery furnace. But notice here, Jesus went through it with them. Amen. Right? Just as he will go through the great tribulation with us. So we're not alone. Mm -hmm. We're not alone, nor will be... We will be secretly raptured away. Christ will give us the power, the strength, the courage to meet the crisis and to go through it. Mm. Next. It says, The children of Israel were not saved from Egypt mm. before the plagues fell, but afterward. Mm. Similarly, the righteous will be in the world when the seven last plagues fall, but God will preserve us. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. We have to go through crises, but mm. God will preserve us. Let's close. Number 21. It says, although we must go through tribulation, what is the prayer of Christ on our behalf, which should encourage us? Let's go to John 17. Let's look at what Christ said, and let's draw some strength from it as we go um, throughout this week, this coming week. Should God grant us life? We need some hope. Amen. John 17. Are we there, friends? Let's start at verse 14. John 17, verse 14. Let's, let's grab hold of some courage mm -hmm this morning, some hope this morning. It says, I have given them thy word, mm -hmm. and the world had hated them. The world has hated us, friends. Why? Because they are not of the world. We're not of the world, friends, even mm. as I am not of the world. Verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Did Jesus mm. say he's going to take us out of the world because right. it's evil, it's wicked? Rapture us. No. We have to remain here. Mm. But he says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from mm. the evil. Will Jesus keep us from evil today? Will he do it this coming week? Yes. Oh, but we have to believe it. We have to read it. Yes, Verse 14, what did God give us? He said, he's given them thy word. word. Are we reading God's word, friends? Mm. Yes, we're fulfilling mm. the word of God this morning. Mm. Number Verse 16, they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Mm. So what is Christ's desire, his heart's longing in verse 17? Mm, that he will sanctify us. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And what mm. is today? It is the Sabbath, right? Mm. It is a holy day, a symbol that God wants to sanctify, sanctify. his people. Oh, and were we learning truth this morning, friends? Mm. Right? Were we discerning truth from error this morning? So what, what is God doing to us even now? He's sanctifying us, mm. friends. Because we're receiving the truth and accepting the truth by God's grace, Amen. right? It's one thing to receive the truth, but we must accept the truth. Amen? Sanctification, friends. And lastly, in verse 23, Jesus says, This is his will for you and for me. Mm -hmm. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me mm. and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Mm. Will you be one with Jesus today? Will you allow him to make you perfect? Mm. That's my prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth. For indeed it has set us free this morning. Set us free today. We are captives in sin. But you sent your word and it healed us. And as we have gone over these biblical truths, these doctrines are, Lord, of your word, I pray that it would have found good ground, that the seed of truth may find depth, may find fertile ground to grow in, Lord. We see our need this morning, and your desire is to sanctify us. So as we, as we have received the truth, as it is in Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit may germinate these seeds of truth. And as a result, dear Father, we may go forth to share, evangelize, to bring others from darkness into your marvelous light. And if we may encounter individuals that believe in a, rapture, a secret rapture, even other doctrines, help us, dear Father, to have the word hidden in our heart that we may unravel the words of truth to them. Bless us, bless this 
um, waiting congregation, bless those who are online there, Father. I pray that your Holy Spirit, again, may move in this place, may bring deliverance, may bring hope and encouragement to every soul. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're going to continue our service with singing. I hope everyone has something to sing about. Amen? Ooh, mercy. Has God been good to us this week? Do we have something to sing about? Our blessings, many blessings that God has given us. So let's turn to him, 216, as we sing together. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Him 216. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, then time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal light and fair. When the saints of earth shall gather on there on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On the bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When the chosen one shall gather to the only on the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all this wondrous love and care. When all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Amen. Let's turn over to Tis. Almost time for the Lord to come, him 212. It is almost time for the Lord to come. It is almost time for the Lord to come. I hear the people say, The stars of heaven are growing dim. It must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone. The day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The signs foretold in the sun and moon, in earth and sea and sky. Allah proclaimed to all mankind, the coming of the Master draweth nigh. Oh, it must be the breaking of the 
day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone. The day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. It must be time for the waiting church to cast her pride away. With girded loins and burning lamps to look for the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone. The day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Go quickly out. Go quickly out in the streets and lanes and in the broad highway and call the maid, the halt and line to be ready for the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. The night is almost gone. The day is coming on. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Amen. Let's sing the next song right over, 213. Jesus is coming again. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Echo in hilltops, proclaim it, he plays. Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the Lamb that was slain. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. He bends the bird the vast wandering throng. Jesus is coming again. Tempest and whirlwind, the anthem prolong. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Nations are angry, but this we do know. Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increases, men run to and fro. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. So we're going to go into a season of prayer at this time. But before we do, 
I want us all to consider a verse in Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 3. You don't have to go there, it's just one verse, but if you want to, chapter 3, let's look at verse 20. Chapter 3, verse 20 of the Revelation. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in with him. I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Now, before we go into a season of prayer, I want us to consider this verse as it relates to ourselves, our lives, our relationship with Christ. He says, if any man open the door, he will come in. What is it? And we have to be honest with ourselves. What is it in our lives that is blocking that door? Of course, we're talking about sin right now. Amen? So what is it that's at the door that's blocking Christ from entering the heart to come in and sup with you? Is it unforgiveness? Is it pride, selfishness? Is it a friend? Is it a spouse? What is it? Are you willing today to remove that, that barricade, that block, um, so that Christ will come in? I mean, Jesus is waiting patiently. Waiting patiently, he's knocking. He will never force himself on us. He will never force himself on us. And just because we're all here in our Sabbath attire, whether you're watching online, um, that, that means nothing. Because in great controversy, it says many are joined to the church who have not united with Christ, right? Some solemn words. So today, whatever it is that may be blocking that entrance, let us go on our knees and examine. Only we can examine ourselves and see what that is and ask Christ to remove that, that barricade, that block. All right, so I'm gonna invite you to kneel with me as we have a season of prayer. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your many blessings, your watch care over us throughout this week. And we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath morning, a day that you have set aside for a holy purpose. And today, Lord, we're here examining ourselves in light of this scripture we just read. You're knocking at the doors of our hearts, and it is up to us to open. Lord, there's many things, as it says, much rubbish that can be at the door. Help us, Lord, to see those things that will block you from coming in. We ask, Lord, that you will help us to fully surrender our lives to you today. And today, Lord, we know the Sabbath, you cannot wait to grant these petitions. And a closer walk with you is one that we know that you will grant today if only we are willing. So give us the desire, Lord, to follow you fully. Help us to surrender those darling sins, the ones that we consider darling, whether it's the pride, the selfishness, the unforgiveness, the gossiping, whatever it is, Lord, we ask for your help today. It could be a friend that's hindering us, even a spouse. Lord, I ask that you will fix those barricades, those blocks, and we pray, Lord, if it is a relationship, Lord, that you repair it. Today, I wanna lift up every family that's represented here today, locally and online, asking that you will continue to bless and visit them. Today, I pray for every marriage every family. I pray for those that may be sick. We pray for healing. 
and we know, Lord, that you want to heal. We also pray, Lord, as we are gathered here today, today as a body of believers, that you will pour out your spirit without measure. We invite you into this place today, into our hearts. Lord, we also want to pray as Pastor Henriquez comes with the message today, we ask that you bless him as he deliver it. Open our hearts, our minds, so that we may receive whatever it is that we will hear and prepare for your soon return. We pray for the technology. We pray for those that are watching online that they will also receive and be blessed by this experience. We thank you, Lord, for all that you will do. We thank you for your, your, your love and your grace. Keep us faithful, we pray. Forgive us for our sins is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's turn in our hymnals to him. 626, in a little while we are going home. Him 626. Let us sing a song that will cheer us by the way. In a little while we're going home. For the night will end in the everlasting day In a little while we're going home In a little while, in a little while We shall cross the billows from We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past in a little while we're going home we will do the work that our hands may find to do in a little while we're going home and the grace of god will our daily strength renew in a little while we're going home in a little while, in a little while, we shall cross the billows from. We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past. In a little while, we're going home. We will smooth the path for some weary way we're feet. In a little while we're going home And may loving hearts spread around and influence sweet In a little while we're going home In a little while, in a little while We shall cross the billows foam we shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past. In a little while we're going home. There's a rest beyond, there's relief from every care. In a little while we're going home. And no tears shall fall in the city bright and fair. In a little while we're going home In a little while, in a little while We shall cross the billows foam We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past In a little while we're going home Amen. Let's turn to hymn 598. Hymn 598. Watch ye saints. (coughs) 
Watch ye saints with eyelids waking. Amen. Let's sing it together. Watch ye saints with eyelids waking. Lo, the power of heaven are shaking. Keep your lamps all trimmed and burning. Ready for the Lord's returning. Lo, he comes. Lo, Jesus comes. Lo, he comes. Jesus comes to reign victorious. Lo, he comes. Yes, Jesus comes. Lo, the promise of your Savior, pardon sin and purchase favor. Blood washed robes and crowns of glory. Haste to tell redemption's story. Lo, he comes. Lo, Jesus comes. Lo, he comes. He comes, the glorious Jesus comes to reign victorious. Lo, he At their base are crumbling, hark the chariot wheels are rumbling. Tell a tale of grace abounding, while the seven trumpet is sounding. Lo, he comes, Lo, Jesus comes, Lo, he he comes, a glorious Jesus comes to reign victorious. Lo, he comes, yes, Jesus comes. Nations wait, the proud and stately, Christ the King, the Master greatly. Earth her lane, this pens is summing. Shout ye saints, your Lord is coming. Lo, he comes. Lo, Jesus comes. Lo, he comes. He comes, the glorious Jesus comes to reign victorious. Lo, he comes. Yes, Jesus comes. Sinners come. Sinners come while Christ is pleading. Now for you, he's interceding. Haste to grace and time diminished. Shall proclaim the mystery finished. Lo, he comes. Lo, Jesus comes. Lo, he comes. He comes, a glorious Jesus comes to reign victorious. Lo, he comes. Yes, Jesus comes. Oh, sorry. Let's turn to him 604. Him 604. Him 604. We know not the hour. Him 604. We know not the hour of the master's appearing. Yet signs are foretell 
that the moment is nearing when he shall return tis a promise most sharing but we know not the hour he will come let us watch and be ready he will come Hallelujah, hallelujah, he will come in the clouds of his Father's bright glory, but we know not the hour. There's life for the wise who are seeking salvation. There's truth in the book of the lord's revelation each prophecy points to the great consummation but we know not the hour he will come let us watch and be ready he will come Hallelujah, hallelujah, he will come in the clouds of his Father's bright glory, but we know not the hour. We'll watch and we'll pray with our lamps trimmed and burning. We'll work and we'll wait till the master's returning we'll sing and rejoice every omen discerning but we know not the hour he will come he will come let us watch and be ready he will come Hallelujah, hallelujah, he will come in the clouds of his Father's bright glory, but we know not the hour. He will come, let us watch and be ready, he will come. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he will come in the clouds of his Father's bright glory, but we know not the hour. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our opening song, hymn 205, hymn 205. The gleams of the golden morning. <clears throat> The golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to their promised home. Oh, we see the...